of you. Uh, I'm a new broadcaster here. I'll be joining Bally Sports and uh, calling the games of Brandon. Can't wait to get started, uh, but let's see the guys that we really want to see today. Uh, we're doing our pitcher panel. It's going to be a lot of fun. Spencer Strider joining us today. Max Freed as well with us here today. And Bryce Elder, our third member of the panel today. Is there no mic there? No. no. He's going to yell. He's fine. Spencer does we're all good? the talking anyway. Okay, we're good. so you are going to share. not true. <laughs> all right, let's do this. First of all, let's take a look back at 2023. An unbelievable year uh, for this pitching staff. Spencer, I want to start with you uh, and the strikeout record. Uh, wondering for you, you look back now. A lot of times you're in the middle of a season, it's kind of hard to reflect. But now that you've kind of gone through an offseason, uh, tell us a little bit about last season and kind of what it meant to you. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we did a really good job of despite some some injuries and some some other you know adverse situations just just kind of staying consistent um you know i give credit to the coaching staff and the front office for that too and um you know i think our trajectory was always to be in the postseason and so we um tried to plan well for that and you know ultimately need to improve that a little bit but um yeah, you know, we, we were right where we needed to be. The regular season went really well for us. How about on the personal side for you? I mean, have you had that moment where you kind of talk a little smack to John Smoltz or just <laughs> let it go? Have you seen him? Certainly not. Um, <laughs> I'll do it for yeah, you. I, I, yeah, you, you, you do that. <laughs> All right, Max, how about you? Uh, some bad luck injuries uh, last year, as we know, but uh, when you were out there and you're healthy, you were dealing. A uh, little reflection for you personally on 2023. Uh, you know, I was, I was frustrated with it. Uh, just being sitting at home on my couch when the team's on the road, watching the games on television like everyone else, not the most ideal um, way I want to be watching the games. Uh, just kind of, it was just happened to just be one thing after another. Never really felt like I got into a good rhythm or swing of things and uh, really just been keeping my head down, trying to best prepare as I can so I can put all that behind me and make every single one of my starts this year. But I mean, these two guys really kind of put the rotation and the pitching staff on their backs and, you know, give them a ton of credit because, you know, they, they did a heck of a job. Yeah, and Bryce, certainly for you, I mean, that was a big part of your story. Kind of wild, right? The idea that you started the season in the minor leagues, you make the one start, end up being an all-star. Uh, that is an incredible story, not something that happens uh, very often. And then ultimately 33 combined starts for you uh, last year. It's a big number. Right between the regular season, that one start in the minor leagues, and then uh, the postseason. Tell us a little bit about uh, your year. When you look back, we know how strong that first half was. It was a pretty incredible year. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I thought the beginning of the year, obviously, was had, had quite a bit of success and it was a lot of fun. And I think, you know, I, I learned very quickly how long, I guess it was my first full major league season, I learned very quickly how long it was. 162 games is over seven months is a long time. So I learned a lot about how, you know, just – you get tired and, and and things don't go your way, but you got to figure way you got to find a way to figure it out. And I think that um, that's something moving into this year. I think will be a lot better. So it was a lot of fun watching Stride strike everybody out. It's kind of <laughs> impressive, you know. You, you go out and you, you get used to him striking out eight to ten every night, and you don't realize how special that is. Settle so. down, just stop. <laughs> I was trying to get to Max Spencer, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to to be at Max being healthy again this year, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So take us through that part now as we get to the offseason. You mentioned learning that first year. Pretty much everybody's got to go through it one way or the other. You get a feel for how long the season is, how your stuff plays, all of those things. What did that do for you this offseason? Was there anything you learned from this past year that said, hey, i got to address this this winter? Yeah, I mean, there's little things just, you know, just as far as arm care and body care and little bitty things that you don't, don't ever matter until they matter. Um, you don't know until you know. So... Um, I think little things as far as just w continue the same workouts and everything, throwing programs the same, but now I'm just aware, you know, you do something once, your body's ready for it. So um, looking forward to it and ready to go. Max, for you, I mentioned kind of some bad luck injuries uh, that you had last year, but something that stuck out that I want to ask you about and curious how it plays into 24 uh, was the addition of that sweeper. 
right? And something that we didn't see a, a ton of, but a little bit. And we hear more and more uh, about this pitch. Is that something that uh, you're going to continue to work on, continue to grow, maybe a bigger part of your repertoire? Or is it something that's going to stay maybe on the small side? Um, the, the thing about me with my slider is since I've been in the big leagues, it's kind of been a pitch that's when I first introduced it in 2019, it was very, it was very sweepy and it was big. Mm -hmm. And then in 21, I shortened it up a little bit and it got a little harder and almost like a cutter. And then I tried to make the adjustment of making it a little bit bigger and it kind of morphed into its own little thing. And so my, my sliders kind of ranged from, you know, 79, 80 to 90. And it's kind of always been that pitch where, you know, these guys kind of joke around with me or I could throw it one, one time and it's 81 and it's big or it could be 88 and it's short. So um, I'm, I'm a big believer in it's really hard to time up a pitch if you don't really know the speed. So I kind of like to be able to just play around with the sp you know, speed shapes and that kind of stuff. And, and if I can miss a barrel by just a little bit, then I feel like I'm winning. So I'm reading between the lines and listening to you. Does that mean we have permission not to call out a sweeper? So what happens is that there's these algorithms that pitches will show up, and it's been kind of new. And quite honestly, I'm, for fans, I will tell you as a broadcaster, like it's kind of annoying that all of a sudden it's like, is it a sweeper? Is it not a sweeper? You see some pitches that look like a small, tight slider that are getting called a sweeper. I'm like, there's nothing sweepy about that. And then you feel like you're doing a disservice to your viewers by calling it uh, a sweeper. So the way I think I understood your tone there is don't call it a sweeper. You can, you can call it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, if it sweeps. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take offense to kind of any classification. I was looking for permission not to call it a sweeper. That's where I was going. You, with that. you can call it a slider, and I'll right. be perfectly happy Love about it. it. Thank you. That's huge. You have no idea how big that is um, for us. All right, Spencer, how about for you? Uh, I had Rick Kranitz on my radio show a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about you, talking about all you guys, but in particular, um, we were talking about your changeup. I think one of the things that's so unique about you is not just your ability to strike guys out, the big numbers you put up last year. It's the fourth highest strikeout rate we have ever seen uh, in a single season, but you're essentially doing it with two pitches, right? The great fastball and the great slider. Uh, he had talked about perhaps maybe seeing that changeup a little bit more. Tell us about that pitch and maybe some of your preparation here for this season. Yeah, you, uh, you know, the changeup is something I've thrown, you know, really my whole life, but, but uh, as I've learn more about my body and biomechanics and just my general strengths and weaknesses. It's something that I've come to understand is not an easy pitch for me to throw mechanically. So, um, you know, I, I think the ceiling for it is, is where it is. And um, it's never going to be something I can throw 50% of the time. Um, there are other pitches that I can learn that I have a higher aptitude for that I might try to learn. And, you know, that, that may be a direction I move in. But, um, you know, I understand, I understand the logic behind, you know, more pitches equals harder to hit. That's not necessarily true. Mm. Um, you know, for me, what, what makes me successful is, is really, you know, just being on time. It's difficult to, to react when you have to honor the fastball. So um, execution is really the biggest thing for me. I think that's what where I got in trouble sometimes. All right, Max, I want to ask you this one. Obviously, some really big news here for the Braves uh, this winter and bringing in Chris Sale. I uh, mentioned, of course, the great year that Spencer had regarding strikeouts. For those that don't know, uh, Chris Sale has the highest strikeout rate in our game's history. And you think about some of the greats like Nolan Ryan and Randy Johnson, no one has struck out hitters at a higher rate uh, than Chris Sale. Uh, the idea of him joining this staff, and we're looking obviously up at three studs here right now that are already on this pitching staff, and adding Chris Sale, I know it's still early, haven't spent probably a lot of time with him, but uh, your reaction when you found out that Chris Sale was joining your club? Uh, I was really excited. Um, Fortunately, been able to have a couple conversations with him. Met him last night at the gala, and everything that I would have expected, uh, you know, from him, watching him on the other side and just admiring his career is uh, to a T. You know, I've I've heard only good things about him. Fiery competitor, willing to take the ball whenever, and um, he's going to leave it all out there every single time he he can, and. Uh, when you have someone who is as accomplished as he is and he's and has been able to do the things that he's been able to do in this game you know numerous top Cy Young votes all-stars World Series champ um, you know bringing that into a clubhouse is huge and he brings a different attitude and and fiery competitiveness that we're definitely going to embrace 
Um, and at the end of the day, all of us <coughs> can only take the ball once every five days. So the more, the more that we can have guys that are going to be able to contribute and kind of bring that, com that fiery competitiveness to try to win baseball games, uh, you know, bring them in. Bring them in. Spencer, I want to ask you about that part a little bit because we see it from the outside. You're getting settled in, obviously, really nicely in your career. But thinking about Chris Sale, he's pretty animated. He's getting older, maybe slowing down a little bit in that regard. But there is something to him. There is an edge to him. And I think a lot of people have wondered about that, if that's something extra that uh, a team that obviously has had unbelievable success these last couple of years uh, would actually give them a boost if there is such a thing. Uh, your thoughts on, I know you probably haven't seen him a ton, but known as a guy uh, with some attitude out there, quite honestly. Yeah, uh, you know, I – best teammates I ever had are guys that want to win. Um, and I think that if you want to sort of narrow down who Chris Sale is, I've been able to figure it out very quickly. He wants to win. Um, you know, that's that's my top priority. I think I can speak for everybody. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success in Atlanta. This this franchise had a lot of success. But um, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, everybody's going to be most happy if we walk home with a World Series trophy. So, um, you know, to get to that level, to have that success in the postseason, it, it takes a – you know, a guy who's willing to step up and, and put it all out there, and that's exactly who he is. So I always like to do this. It takes a little bit of thinking and kind of recollection a little bit, Bryce, but I'll start with you. And thinking about at times, at one point in your career, I know it's a young career so far, uh, but a pitch that you threw that maybe sticks out or a strikeout that you, you know, recorded at one time, whether it's executing a great pitch uh, that you're just like, man, that was my best two-seam fastball I've ever thrown or this was my best strikeout uh, that I ever have. Is there any that stick out uh, in your mind? That ball came out of your hand and uh, you still think about it because it was that good. Um, one, I don't know that it was that good. I think I kind of got lucky. <laughs> um, but this year when we were in L.A., I was fortunate enough to strike out Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually was anticipating where the ball was going and he was correct and so if the pitch would have done what it was correctly supposed to do he would have hit it a long way but it didn't do the right thing and I, I got lucky and struck him out so that's that's my one uh, oh, real quick hold on and what about first big league strikeout you remember it and who it was in the pitch uh, I think it was a changeup that was also I got lucky on wasn't that great a pitch it was a changeup up against the Nationals um, I don't recall who it was Yadiel Hernandez yes it was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right Max how about you thinking about that you know pitch or two or the great execution whether it's finishing off a great hitter or just the idea that's like man that's the best pitch I can ever throw um, for me, it's making a pitch that I don't throw all that often. Um, so for me, I don't throw my sinker a ton, but um, being able to command it to my glove side or inside to a righty is, is it's a hard thing to do. And the first time that I froze a guy for strike three and made that pitch um, correctly was to Starling Marte. Um, I threw a front hip sinker and he froze and I struck him out on it and I remember walking around the mound just being like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> I did it. Um, yeah, so no, that I'd say something where it's you have to make a executed pitch on a corner. Uh, that's that's my favorite one. And first big league punch out, you remember it? Yeah, it was my second. <clears throat> it was my second hitter. Uh, I walked Cameron Rupp on five pitches. Um, and then the next guy came up and it was Cameron Perkins. Yeah, I think you put him into retirement because we didn't see him again oh. after that. <laughs> all right, Spencer, for you, I mean, listen, we all love watching the pitches. You had a live arm, uh, but is there that fastball or slider that stuck out over the years so far here for you? Just the ones that I didn't get back. <laughs> Those are the ones I think about too much. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, it's hard to beat a good executed fastball up in the zone. The guy swings under it. Mm -hmm. um, threw a few of them, so. Now, I mean, is there that, was there that kind of like my fastball plays moment for you early on in your career when you realized some of the great hitters of the game weren't getting to it? Yeah. Um, you know, I had, I had a, as a reliever in 22, um, you know, I was kind of used as a long guy. Um, we were down generally. And, um, you know, I, I got a chance to sort of pitch in like a, like a setup role one game against the Marlins and just completely blew it and we lost. And then didn't pitch for like 11 days or something. I mean, it was a while. And there was a there was a roster deadline for uh, reducing the roster, like two days, and I still hadn't pitched. And actually, had a conversation with with Max, um, you know, and he kind of was like, "Hey, just just throw the ball, 
you know, it made it simplified it for me. I won't go into the details, but uh, <laughs> it was against the Rangers, and I just I threw like 30 fastballs and got like 13 swings and misses or something <laughs> in three innings, and it was like, okay, I, but I've, I've been making this too difficult. First punch out? It was against the Reds. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can take a guess. Second baseman? No, no, I don't know. <laughs> Jonathan India. Was, was the first punch out. Yeah, one more for each of you guys, and then we're going to open it up to some Q&A. Um, listen, I, I think everyone picks up on it. You guys are humble, you're team focused, and we get it. And of course, everybody wants to see uh, this team win. I'm curious for each of you guys, is there a personal goal that you set? I get it, team first, we, we understand that part of it, but is there a number in there? Is there a walk rate? Is there an amount of strikeouts, innings, starts? Is there anything that you focus on from a personal standpoint? Not saying it's the first thing you think about, but is there something uh, for each of you that you kind of go into this season saying this is something I'd like to accomplish? You want me to go first? <laughs> um, personal goal stuff for me, I've never been, I would say in, in my minor league career, when I tried to chase stats, it always kind of just, it wouldn't go well for me. Um, things kind of started switching when I got to the big leagues and just focus about winning the game. So for me, my goal every year is every time I take the ball that our team wins the game. So if I put us in a position to be able to win and we win every single start that I make, I'm happy. So that's, that's more of my, my personal goal that I stick with every time. Bryce, gonna get anybody here to be selfish? Uh, not gonna get me <laughs> to. Uh, uh, mine's always make 32 starts and every time I go out, whether you give up five runs or no runs, give the team a chance to win. Just say it, 300 strikeouts, just say it. 300 strikeouts doesn't get us a World Series. Um, you know, I, I, as I've played, we've kind of, I've kind of accumulated different um, like markers that are guarantors of success, whether it's first pitch strike rate. Um, you know, in, at Clemson, we had a, a good one, which was if the staff threw 150 pitches or less in a game, our, our win rate was like in the 90s. Mm. Um, you know, that's just being efficient. That's throwing strikes. It's, it's attacking the zone. And, um, you know, you can, you can break that down however which way you'd like. And, um, you know, I think, you know, kind of piggybacking off of Max, the, the more objective you can be and, you know, the less analytical in a game, which mm. is tough for me and it's tough for some of these guys too, is, is generally a good, uh, good approach. I tried. I tried. No luck. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and open it up to uh, questions. Jess, go ahead. This goes to all three. Which team do you like to beat the most? <laughs> I think I've already answered this question before. Um, I, the team we're playing right then, you know, whoever, whoever walks in the box, it, it doesn't matter what jersey they're wearing. I think, um, you know, another conversation that we've had as a team this offseason, too, is just about um, making ourselves the opponent. You know, if we can execute our strengths, um, understand what things limit us, um, you know, how to, how to combat those and improve on those, then that's, that's generally what we're, when we're going to be our best. Just, just say the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just say them, then it's fine. It's perfect, yeah. Um, I know, it's... I want to I wanna be able to tell you guys something that's going to be definitive, but every... It's, it's going to piggyback off what he says, and it's not exciting at all. But every, every team that you face at the big league level is extremely talented and they are really good so um you never want to take one for granted or make one you know more important than the other because when you start to do that that's when you give away games and it's not it's not you know no one wants to see that everyone wants us to go out there and and win and go as far as, as possible so for me very much same as him whoever steps in that box against me is uh who i want to beat, beat the most yeah, we know. We that. we all know who we want to see them beat. But Bryce uh, hates the Rangers. <laughs> he hates them. <laughs> Next question. Good afternoon, y'all. My name is Christian Woodson. I have two questions. Uh, one to all three. I was wondering what y'all did to get out of the lower 80s into the 90s, and uh, what is Spencer Strider's leg day routine? <laughs> it's. I saw it the other day. It's it's a long workout. <laughs> it is a long workout. Um, Velo jump. When do you start Velo to see jump. it? Um, wow. From the 80s to the 90s. That was, for me, 
I would say that I touched I touched 90 for my first time when I was I want to say like 16 or 17 and I, I didn't really even know it I hadn't at that point uh, my life growing up I always played football and football season basketball and basketball season baseball baseball season and it kind of separated uh, so I didn't really have a radar gun on me until just a random tournament I would say when I was 16 or 17 and I just happened to throw and someone told me that I had hit 90 but up until then I genuinely didn't know how hard I threw so um, not necessarily the best answer to the question but uh, I think being able to be repeatable in your mechanics and really understanding your body and then having the strength and um, the proper strength not just like you know lifting I guess like beach body muscles, but just being able to have solid core and rotational, um, you know, being able to be really good and aware of your body is really important. Bryce, I'd like you to get in on this one because each of you guys are different, right? In the way that you do things, in the way you get big league hitters out, uh, lefty power, righty power, you do it a little bit differently with the two seam fastball. Uh, the idea of chasing velocity, I think, could be a dangerous spot if you don't understand your strengths. For you, uh, where were you over the years in thinking about velo? Well, for one, uh, I was whispering this to Strider a second ago. My average fastball this year was still under 90. <laughs> so I'm still trying to get there, too. <laughs> um, but no, I just, I, I never was a hard thrower. I had to figure out how to make the ball move and, and throw it where I wanted it. Um, there's been times in my life that I, in college, I threw 91, 93. Um, but I just always kind of viewed velocity as if that wasn't ever, like, if you could tell me, hey, there's a chance you could throw 100 or 101, like, I might try to chase it. I don't think my body moves that way. I might, I might chase a few extra miles an hour, and all that's going to do is take away from my command and the way I can move the ball. So I think that's one of the biggest deals. If you understand kind of how to go about things, um, as long as it's a smart way of going about it, then you can chase velocity. But other than that, I think there's, there's times where you need to be careful because, you know, there's always some give and take with everything. If anybody recorded that, please put it on social media because it's an unbelievable message. These kids are chasing it like crazy and kind of forgetting about the idea of you actually have to pitch. You can be an all-star sitting at 89 miles an hour. Have you ever missed leg day? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is directed to my, I mean. <laughs> Definitely not directed to me. I, uh, I, uh, most days are leg day to answer the question. <laughs> That's it, another good lesson. Yes. Howdy. Um, so, out of all, everyone that y'all have fished against, who is y'all's favorite person to strike out? Favorite? Say some bad things about your opponents. I got one. It's easy. Lane Thomas plays for Washington. Lives right down the street from me. Stinks. Ter <laughs> terrible guy. Horrible guy. Um, for me, it was just because we, we played with them for so long, but being able to be on the other side and face Freddie and Dansby, that was, that was, a, that was a fun matchup. Are you striking out Bryce Harper is not fun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with, just because he's with us this year, is Jared Kelenic. It's <laughs> a great way to start that relationship off. Next, where are we? Where am I looking? Oh, go ahead. Who has the microphone? Oh, there we go. Hi. Did you have any um, Little League injuries, and how did you come back from it? Anybody get hurt when they were young? I, uh, when I was younger, I broke my right arm, I guess my right wrist. And um, you know, I had no idea that I was ever going to play baseball in college, much less for the Braves. But um, it's kind of a tough thing, but if you ever go through an injury, it's just kind of one of those deals you just got to trust that as you grow up and as you get bigger and stronger, things are going to kind of come back together and you'll be just fine. So I know when I did that, I was really worried about it, but it all ends up working out. That's it. Everyone else stayed healthy until they got to the big league spot. That's when, that's when it gets a lot harder. Where are we at? Where's our microphone? Yeah. This is a preference question. Going back to 2021, you guys did not have a bye week in the first round of the playoffs. I know you did in 23, maybe you did in 22. What is your preference for the first round? Had you rather be pitching in a real game or have that first round bye? I, I, you'd always rather have the bye. Um, you'd fewer games to, to win. 
to get to you know the World Series. So um, you know, there's been you know talk about it being a, a hurdle for teams that you know win their division and whatnot. And I think it's it's a convenient excuse in a lot of in a lot of ways. You know, we may not have handled it well. I mean, the last two years, I don't think that that's the reason we didn't win. But um, if there, you know, we we have to look everywhere we can for for improvement and and uh, things we can do better. And that that is certainly an obstacle. But at the end of the day, you'd much rather play fewer games. Right here. Who is your best friend on the Braves? <laughs> Good luck. Charlie Morton. Uh, Charlie, yeah. I think, I think Charlie's everyone's best friend. <laughs> he, is, he is probably the nicest and most gem of a person that you could ever meet. Over here. Who was your favorite team growing up? Be careful. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Los Angeles, so I grew up a Dodgers fan. But <laughs> oh, no. I said, be careful. I uh, was brainwashed as a Cleveland fan, which um, has been a life of misery mostly. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm grateful to be a part of an organization that you know has has had some success. So. I grew up uh, in North Texas area, and I'm a Rangers fan, or was. Hey, uh, real quick, along those lines, like the first time you have a favorite team, you get to go into that ballpark and pitch. I don't know if you had a chance to pitch in Cleveland yet, but when you go in and maybe don't do well, I grew up in New York, was a Yankee fan, first time I went to New York and got my butt kicked, I was no longer a Yankee fan. For you guys, is there something about uh, pitching against the team that you grew up rooting for, thought it was really cool, and then you're like, you know what, we're done? I think... I think once you, growing up, you have that kind of like mystique about it. But once you get into, once you get into pro ball and you start playing, and um, all of that kind of went away for me. For me personally, I mean, the only thing about going back to LA is you just have a lot more friends and family in the stands, and that's probably Ticket about requests. it. But as far as the, the, the appeal of the hometown team, yeah. there's not so much. Um, you know, when I, I guess one of my starts in 22 was in Arlington, and it was different because it wasn't the ballpark in Arlington. Like, that's where I grew up going, and it was Globe Life. Um, but, you know, I was all happy about playing the Rangers, and then start didn't go very well. I think Corey Seager hit one about 30 rows up in the right field, so I wasn't as much of a Rangers fan very quickly <laughs> after that one started. That's usually all it takes. So no starts against Cleveland yet? No, I haven't, haven't pitched there. Got uh -huh. to go, and that was, that was cool. I got a lot of family there, but uh, didn't get to pitch. Where are we? Okay. Where am I looking? Right here. Go ahead. Oh, what age go. did y'all start pitching? I think I started pitching at seven or eight years old. Um, that was uh, co or coach pitch was up until six, and I think first kid pitch was at seven, and I just started pitching as soon as I could. As as soon as I could get on a mound and start pitching, I started pitching. <laughs> uh, I, I started pitching when I was probably seven years old. Yeah, probably seven years old. And then I quit for a little while and then started pitching again when I was about 14. I don't remember how old I was, but I know the first time I ever pitched, and I always wanted to, was well, I, I hit three guys in an inning and struck out three guys in an inning. So <laughs> that, that actually was this year, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's our mics? Yep. Uh, me and my sister were playing on the field all the time when we when we were coming here all day long. Aww. Pretty fun. Hey, how about that? The first time you ever had a chance to step on a big league field, whether it be assuming possibly potentially before you actually got to the big leagues, ever happened for any of you guys? I did. Yeah. I uh, the first I got to twice before I was in the in the big leagues. Well, first time I was. We went to a school trip in um, Washington, and we got to go to Camden Yards. Mm. And uh, one of my favorite players, and I you know, can make a case for why he's the greatest player of all time, is Cal Ripken Jr. And uh, getting to, to walk into the dugout and you know, think like, man, this is where Cal <laughs> stood. And you know, picture him walking around the outfield when he broke, um, broke the you know, uh, consecutive games record and everything. Mm. It was a very cool experience for me. Uh, first time I played in a big league uh, stadium, I think was 
going into my senior year of high school, they had the uh, the All American game at Petco Park, so I played in San Diego. I think growing up, the only time I was ever on the big league field was like you know Sundays after the game, <laughs> you, we'd get to run the bases or whatever. I did that a couple times, but other than that, first time was when I threw here in debut. Go ahead. What's your favorite memory as a Brave? Winning the World Series. Um, for me, probably when we clinched our division the last two years, I wasn't on the team in 21. Um, but hopefully um, in the near future, we'll have something better than that. Same. All right. We're, yep. Uh, hi, guys. I don't have one question. This will be a, anyone can answer this. So who do you all consider to be the X Factor starter or pitcher that no, or reliever that no one's speaking of on the roster that will have the most impact this year? Me personally, I think it's this guy to the left. Um, I think that, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of talk about a lot of the additions that we've made that have been, uh, you know, very well talked about and they're great players, but um, what he was able to do, because he literally, when I got hurt at the beginning of the year after making my first start, he took my place and then made every single start for the rest of the year, put the team, you know, basically lifted us up when we only had Spencer and Charlie, and he came along and obviously put together an unbelievable first half um, and grinded through a lot of stuff last year. And I know that he's someone that is just very, he's hardworking and he's gonna be as disciplined and ready as possible and knowing that he went through, um, you know, just some experiences of what you experience in your first full season to be able to come out this year. I think he's going to make some huge strides. Does anybody remember Tyler Matzik? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember that name. He'll be back this year. <laughs> Over here. If you guys had a chance to play with any past Braves player, mm. who would it be and why? That's a great question. Uh, mine would be Greg Maddox because I try to pitch like him. Mine would probably be Hank Aaron. I mean, I feel like it's it's kind of self-explanatory. He's one of the best hitters and players ever, and to be able to take the field uh, with him would be would be unbelievable. You know, I'd like to uh, get to throw to Eddie Perez, He's one of our coaches <laughs> and um, phenomenal person, and and uh, enjoyed talking to him about you know, game calling and whatnot. And so that'd be, that'd be neat to throw to him. Those two kind of go together, right? I mean, Greg Maddox pretty much kept Eddie in the game for a long time and mm -hmm. had a chance to throw to him when I was here. Where are we at? Right Far left. Oh, sorry. As a young uh, pitcher, what do you recommend to help their game? And does long toss really work? <laughs> you want to go? OK. I'm going to condense this TED talk as best I can. <laughs> so long toss. The concept of long toss is <laughs> you're going to increase your, let your distance increase your effort, right? So it's about very easy throws, the minimal effort required to make the throw at that distance, and you let the distance increase your arm strength, right? <laughs> I you know, all that? I know. <laughs> what do you want me to do here? <laughs> so long toss does really work if you do it right, but it's very difficult to, to perform long toss the way it's understood now correctly. I think that, well, this is a fact, at 120 feet for a pitcher who's fully grown and at 90, or thrown at 60 feet, 6 inches, 120 feet simulates the same strain that's put on your elbow technically as throwing a pitch. So generally speaking, as long as you're reaching 120 feet warming up for a game, you are achieving a proper warm-up stress on your elbow to get on the mound. <laughs> well, I think you said something really important there that for kids to listen to the idea because they see it, right? They see what's going on, everything else on the internet, and they start chasing it and should I be long tossing when I'm 12, but I thought you brought up a really good point. You never know what you have until you get to a full-size field. Yeah. Everyone panics when they're so young, um, parents included. Yeah. No, but I, I would add on to that. Um, when you're young, you also have to realize that everyone's very different. Um, 
there's not, you know, the way I prepare is very different than the way that Spencer prepares and is very different than the way Bryce does. And everyone has their own individual um, routine and things that work for them. So just being able to try a bunch of different things and pick what works best for you and what, you know, what you enjoy and what you feel like is going to allow you to perform at your best. And I think just being open-minded enough to try some stuff and then pick what you like and then kind of moving on from there. Much long toss for you, Bryce, at all? Are you long tosser? Yeah, I did. Growing up, I would long toss. I still long toss. I do it more for just kind of a warm-up, get everything ready to go. I actually was unaware of that little <laughs> tidbit that Stride had for us here. <laughs> so I might have to start trying that one out. Right here? Hey, flew in from Arizona to find out uh, what do you guys do for the start of your day when you pitch? Like, do you guys have a ritual, favorite food, or how do you guys prepare for the for the stat? Um, it's, it's evolved a lot over the years. I was, I would, now looking back on it, I would say I was very superstitious rather than routine oriented where I felt like I had to do very specific things at very specific times to, um, be able to perform. Uh, more so now I just kind of, I have a, get, I get to the field, I have a pre, like a pre-game meal around, I would say, probably like 3 o'clock. And then I try to just mosey around the clubhouse and stay normal because I do kind of try to like get intense or some anxiety and stuff that, that creeps up throughout the day. And then I would say about at, you know, 4.45 is when I start my routine. I, you know, will ride the bike, warm up, um, throw my headphones on and kind of just get into my zone and get ready to go out there and compete but it's just more of a, it's taken a lot of years and a lot of different changing of, uh, of routines. Yeah, it's hard for me to really, I mean, it, it's, it's sim I mean, everybody's is kind of similar generally. I think the details change a little bit, but, um, you know, kind of what he's saying is you got to learn how to, how to reach the same readiness despite changing circumstances you know you pitch a day game you pitch a night game it's you can't you can't maintain the same routine so um you know what's essential and uh you know if anything as i've progressed i've cut things out of my routine so things are not as important as they seem it's just what it's finding the most important things and holding on to those so Frenchy told me that uh, you guys really enjoyed talking to the team broadcasters day of your starts. Is that true? Like he said, come ar hang around their locker, ask a bunch of questions, how they're feeling, all that. That's, is that accurate? I think no. Bri Bryce really, you know, he, he'll, go up, <laughs> he'll go up to the booth when he's done pitching. You know? I'm very excited about that. All right, we got one or two more real quick. Where are our microphones? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, I have one. Max, please stay in Atlanta. And what's it going to take for y'all to beat Philly in the postseason? And can I get a picture with all three of y'all after? <laughs> Would you like me to answer that for you? Uh, probably not. I didn't hear the second part. We missed the second part. I heard the picture. Stay here. Get a picture. What was the middle one? And what's it going to take for y'all to beat oh. Philly in the postseason? I mean, not soft questions from that young lady. <laughs> You know, I think that the, the thing that's going to get us or uh, give us the, the chance with all the talent that we have, and if you ask me, which my opinion is biased, but I think we have the most talented team in baseball. Um, you know, great, great coach of mine and, and mentor um, once said that, well, still says that uh, the best team doesn't always win. It's the best team that day. So it doesn't matter, like kind of we talked about earlier, it doesn't really matter who you're playing. It's about showing up and being the best version of yourself that's capable of that moment. And, um, you know, we talk about Chris Sale, and I think that's a guy that's going to help us with that, that approach. It's just every moment, leaving everything we have out there and, um, you know, playing fearlessly. I think that's, that's going to be a big one for us, too. All right, last one. Oh, good. You, you want to well, get I mean, that? Go ahead. I was um, answering what you said at the beginning. Uh, First off, I love I love being here. I love Atlanta. Um, the the Braves do things very uh, very 
particularly where we like keep things behind closed doors. Uh, I'll let, you know, all that kind of stuff play out. But, you know, I love being here. It's, you know, I've got a house here. It's, this is one of my favorite places, so. All right, last one right here. We'll let the guys get out of here. I have two questions. Spencer Strider, mm -hmm. how fast can you pitch in a game? Well, the, the fastest pitch I've ever thrown is 102.4, <laughs> but it was a foul ball. <laughs> so it doesn't really count. I've thrown a couple of 101s that were strikeouts, and those, those were cool. But um, yeah, I, I would like to find out how hard I can throw. We'll see. Um, what are, are all your songs? What are all your favorite songs? Ooh. Oh. Now this is right up your alley. Now, now we're speaking my, you're speaking my language now. Um, well, well, why don't we let the Tyler Childers down here answer first. And then <laughs> Stride, you know me better than this. I'm a Turnpike Troubadours guy, not a right, Tyler right. Childers. Um, probably um, right now, and it's an old, so older song, is probably uh, The Funeral by Turnpike Troubadours. I, I like hip hop. And I, uh, I'll probably go with my walkout song, which is uh, Middle Child by J. Cole. I, I, I can't bring myself to list one over another, but... Um, no. Um, you know what song I really like? And I'll go with it because my wife likes it a lot, and she never makes me skip this song when it comes out in the car. You've never heard of it before. Honey Bee by Unknown Mortal Orchestra. I got one fan. I got one fan. There we go. All right, how about a round of applause for these guys? Really great stuff from all of them. All right, do us a favor, if you wouldn't mind. Let's let them get out of here. I know it's going to get a little crowded over there. They've had a really long day. Uh, I've given their time, done unbelievable work. This was an absolute pleasure uh, for all of us, myself included. Uh, we appreciate it, guys. We'll let you uh, get the early exit in front of the crowd. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, guys.